are just days away from Super Bowl 57 between the Philadelphia Eagles and Kansas City Chiefs. We're on the ground in Arizona to help get you set for the big game. And Commander's Captain Jonathan Allen is fresh off his second consecutive trip to the Pro Bowl. We send our crew into the film room to highlight what made this season so special for number 93. Plus, years ago, Washington's all-time sack leader, Ryan Kerrigan, got his start at the Senior Bowl. Now, over a decade later, he is back in Mobile helping the next generation of pass rushers. Command Center Super Bowl coverage is presented by Safeway, the official supermarket of the Washington Commanders. And welcome on in. Julie Donaldson here in Phoenix, Arizona, getting set for Super Bowl 57 against the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, of course, we had to get out and experience a little bit of the desert, but today's show is all about the game, and it's a jam-packed one. So let's get straight to it. Time to go inside the matchup presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the Washington Commanders. The Chiefs are heading into this year's Super Bowl winners of seven straight games dating back to the regular season. This will be the franchise's fifth Super Bowl appearance overall and third in the past four seasons. And during the regular season, Kansas City won a perfect 5-0 against opponents from the NFC. Meanwhile, the Eagles are trying to win their second Super Bowl title in franchise history. Head coach Nick Sirianni is just the second Eagles coach to have made playoff appearances in each of his first two seasons. Philadelphia is 4-5 and five all time against the Chiefs and have lost the last three meetings overall. When you're playing games like this, um, Kobe, MJ, they talk about it all the time. You're playing games like this, it's about the details. It's about, you know, eliminating external factors, things that don't matter, and focusing on what's important. And I feel like all year that's kind of been my mentality going into every game. You know, focusing on what's in front of me, focusing on what's in front of us as a team, and um, you know, just attacking it. You know, I think it all comes down to your preparation. You want to go out there and be something, you know, reinvent the wheel, be something that you're not, or you know, just be who you've been this whole entire time. And I think both teams that have gotten to this point and they've done great things all year, so it'll be a, be a definite challenge for, for us. I know what it feels like to win the Super Bowl now and uh, to lose the Super Bowl and um, winning it. Even though I didn't, I didn't play my best game, I came through when it counted um, and was able to win it. And then the, the loss, obviously I, I left everything out there, but we, you lose and that feeling you have in the locker room after is it's a terrible feeling because you're so close to your ultimate prize. And so you take motivation from that and try to do whatever you can to make sure you have that, that winning feeling because that's one that you can have forever as well. Um, so just hit play on that right there for me. Okay. All right, you ready? Here goes play. Ron, I can think of no individual more serving than yourself. You truly live up to the Salute to Service Award. It brings me incredible pleasure. I am incredibly wow. humbled and incredibly honored to congratulate my good friend, Coach Ron Rivera, on winning the NFL Salute to Service Award. I can think of no one in my life who is more deserving of an award like this. I served 30 plus years in the U.S. Army, and along with my five Dolores, raised four sons, was serving all around the world, including two tours in Vietnam. So I'm especially honored to congratulate you in receiving the NFL Salute to Service Award. I'm so proud of all the work you do for our military veterans and the families. Thank you for recognizing their service and sacrifice to our country. Keep up the good work. I love you, son. Wow. Oh. Wow. On behalf of the 2.4 million people that serve the United States Armed Forces today, when it comes to honor, empowering, connecting, we know no better than you, sir. Um, the day I met you, You've been so much of a, of, a, of, a, of a light in my life. When you came out with cancer, you really showed me a lot. You really did. I, I thought that I thought that maybe I was sharing things with you and teaching you how to be strong. And all the while, you were showing me how to be strong. 
he has an incredible legacy of service. And no matter where your careers and your lives have taken you, you continue to remain based in that. As a former college team, teammate, it's been really fun watching you and uh, watching you navigate that. But, uh, I do, uh, you honor us. I really do appreciate it. I really do. And, and, and it's, it's been my pleasure to, 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 to be able to do something during the Salute to Service Month. And not just that, but year round. And, and you know, having been around folks like you guys really has meant a lot to me. It has. So thank you all. Thank you all for your service. And thank you. Appreciate it. Coach, congratulations. This right here is really a great honor, and you've had so many mm -hmm. accolades over your time as a player, as a head coach, but what does something like this mean to you personally? You know, to me, this is almost a family award. Mm -hmm. It really is a family award, because my father served 32 years in the United States Army. My mother was there for the whole thing, and you know, as you go through it and recognize the fact that I grew up on Army bases. You know, my first 18 years of my life, I was connected to the military, and I learned so much. And one of the things that I got to see was how it affects and impacts people that live it every day. These are people that do the ultimate and make a sacrifice, a commitment to the country. And all I want to do is be able to say thank you and give back to them. You really focus on, on if it comes time to try to motivate your players, of bringing in military mm -hmm. players. How do you see the your guys kind of react to those different messages? You know, it's been real interesting to watch just because there are so many different messages that our guys have gotten. You know, we've brought in everything from combat veterans to wounded warriors. You know, we brought in a wounded warrior named Cedric King, First Sergeant Cedric King of the 82nd Airborne, mm -hmm. um, a guy that's a double amputee. And he has gotten in front of the players and talked to them about accepting challenges, you know. And it's, it's amazing because when you sit there and you see this guy as a double amputee, mm -hmm. you see how positive he is in life, and you sit there and think, really, I'm complaining about practice? I mean, it, it brings everything into perspective, you know. Um, having so many different guys come in and speak, I've had, you know, four-star generals and three-star admirals come in and speak. I've had lieutenant colonels and first sergeants and privates. I've had, you know... Uh, so many different guys talk to our guys, and the one thing that everything comes back to is culture. It's about culture. It's about having the right type of culture in place. And so that's, I think, one of the things that has helped me as I've gone through this process. We're here at the Super Bowl. What are you looking forward to? Because this is two teams with prolific quarterbacks mm -hmm. and high-powered offense. What do you think we're going to see on Sunday? We're going to see, I think, is, is going to be a game that's going to be uh, come down to the last drive. I really think so. I think that you're going to see some scoring. Um, but more importantly, what you're going to see is, I think, at the end of it, you'll, you'll have a real good sense and feel for who the best player is out there. We have plenty more Super Bowl coverage coming your way from Arizona. Make sure to check out Command Center Super Bowl streams on your Commander's YouTube channel and website each and every morning leading up to the big game. Meanwhile, last week, Commander's defensive tackle Jonathan Allen made his second consecutive appearance in the Pro Bowl. During the regular season, Allen established new career highs in tackles for loss, passes defended, and forced fumbles. Now for more on his impact on Washington's defense, let's send it to Logan Paulson and London Fletcher. It is time to go inside the film room presented by Amino. It pays to be healthy. Fletch, always fun to get you on the breakdown screen because I love the knowledge you bring. And today we get to do something real Fletch, special, Fletch. We get to talk about our guy, John Allen, Pro oh, Bowl. Yeah. Maybe one of the best players on this team. And I just want to talk about how he's grown as a pass rusher. I think everyone knows him for kind of as a power rusher, and you're going to get to see it here, right? You're going to get to see his kind of patented hump move where he's going to try and chop the inside hand. You see the inside hand come mm -hmm. down. And as he does it, that inside hand comes up, and he kind of hooks the guard and is able to lift up a 300 pound man and basically say, I'm going to take you where I want you to go. Yeah, this is the Reggie White inside hump move. It's almost like a forklift. And yeah. when he sets him up, that gives him momentum to be able to swing and lift that guy up. And from there, once the, you see that leg up on the, oh, yeah. he just walks him back into <laughs> yeah. the lap of the uh, quarterback. He's done once yeah, this, he gets yeah, that this, arm yeah, underneath. This, that, that leg up in the air where you can't get in the ground, that's a bad <laughs> spot to be in as a blocker. And he's kind of perfected that. And that's what he's known for is this ability to kind of get he's under on, you. He's on skates. And just, <laughs> just, and just ragged all this man and get a sack, right? That's what he's known for. But I think one of the great things about his game is how it's matured, right? Is He's kind of I said, I need to add stuff in, right? So mm -hmm. you see him kind of set this move up. This is going to be a quick swim right here. John's right here. Um, he's going to set this up kind of with the outside chop. So it looks like he's doing the same thing. Brings the inside hand down, right. then brings the outside hand down for a chop. And then instead of bringing this hand up, he says, no, 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 I'm going to quick swim this. Hand comes really high over the top. 
and is able to get some pressure. And uh, what I love is his ability to recognize the blocking protection or this mm. guard tries to quick set him. Yep. He's coming out at him on a quick set and the ability to be able to know what kind of move he wants to get right away now. Yep. And because he has that inside hump move, yeah. you add that as a counter move and that's, that makes you even more dangerous as a pass rusher. Well, I'm really glad you brought that up because this guard is thinking hump move all day. He's yeah. aggressively tacking that near shoulder. He's yeah. saying, I got to stop him before he gets going. And John says, I know it. Here we go. Knock the hands down and I can attack the outside shoulder. And then what's Fletch? I mean, that's got to bring a tear to your eye seeing that ball pop out there. Well, not only is it about not just getting to the quarterback, creating a sack, but being able to force the fumble. Yeah. And hopefully, I don't know if we, I don't think we recovered this, but the opportunity to recover the football. Yeah. And that's, that's what you want to do as a, a pass rusher. Because when the ball's out, that's a live ball. That's an excellent position for the defense. So that's him as a pass rusher. Always yes. dynamic, right? Does a lot of good stuff. But also, I think he's a really smart football player. Fletch, here he is right here against Philadelphia. And I think something about this formation tells him to, to swim this guard inside. What do you think? Absolutely. And he's looking. Well, he knows offset back. He's thinking the only thing they can probably do against me is maybe run a inside zone, outside, outside zone, something like yep. that. With this, with this back being offset in the gun. And as a blocker, I know that if this back is behind me, it's going to take a minute for him to get there. Exactly. Right? So I got to be a little bit tighter. This guard is not tighter. I think John feels that. Watch him kind of say, all right, dude, you're too wide here. See, see the line of departure? Mm -hmm. he's, he's saying, you're too wide. I can make this play. He, he recognized that because the pre-snap tells, like you were talking about, wins inside and says, what's up, running back? And, and you see the quickness and the recognition, again, of the – the blocking scheme, yeah. knowing, hey, this is inside zone, so let me beat him to the inside. And his feel, his instincts, yeah. and being able to get over, get skinny, so to speak, and that's crazy <laughs> yeah, for he's a guy a 290 man. pounds to be able to get skinny and make that play, that tackle for loss. And I, and I think the, I, like, I like what you said there because he's got a nice short area athleticism, which mm -hmm. really is, is, is on display. And this year, more than any of the year, he's kind of adopted this move of kind of quick swimming the guard versus outside zone, which is very, very hard to do. Puts the defense in a really tough spot. Watch him against Quentin Nelson here say, I'm going to beat the, beat the inside gap. And this, I, I think this is bad news, but he's able to make it work. Yeah, go back. And when you say, talk about quick swimming outside zone, and yeah. for him, his gap responsibility is right, right. here. Yep. Just based on how this defense is. He has that gap. He has that gap. He has this gap in the four-man front, so right. to speak. Or, yeah, yeah he yeah, has that yeah, gap. Yeah, whatever they got there. Yeah, he may even have this gap. But don't, no worries about <laughs> that. But when John swims that, yep. it does put a, him, in a, him in a bind because it compromises the integrity of the defense. Now, what he does a great job of is using this center and ricocheting off of him and being able to get skinny and chase down the line of scrimmage and be able to make that tackle. And, you know, he, he – um, because he runs down a line of scrimmage, yeah. he gets back into his gap. Yeah, he's able to he's able to be back, gap, close the right. gap that he vo voided and um, chase down, chase down a line of scrimmage. And so there I think you see what he does. Excellent pass rushing nuance, evolved as a run defender, doing some different stuff. And I love to see that and hope he continues to grow, grow Fletch each and every week and each and every season because he's a dynamic football player. The Commanders will have another position to fill on their coaching staff as former defensive backs coach Chris Harris has been hired by the Tennessee Titans as their defensive passing game coordinator and cornerbacks coach. During Harris's three years with Washington, the Commanders defense ranked eighth in the NFL in passing yards allowed and fourth in total yards against. Coming up, Brian Kerrigan made the transition from player to coach last season, and now he's able to share the insight with the next round of NFL hopefuls. We will have more from the Senior Bowl next. Plus, we still have plenty more Super Bowl coverage coming your way. Later in the show, London Fletcher joins me to share his keys to victory for each side. Drive to the Draft is presented by Kia, movement that inspires. It has been a fun week tracking the progress of the college prospects as they try their best to impress the coaches and the scouts at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Of course, players want to do their absolute best, and one of those back in 2011 was Ryan Kerrigan as he competed in the Senior Bowl. Well, fast forward 12 years, and he is back as a coach, trying to help players get to the next level of their career. Strong. Oh, <laughs> Weight room. The Peloton's doing me no favors right now.
Feels personal, man. Oh, we're working here, 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 here. I want you bending out around the corner here and reaching with that outside hand, all right? Wide 18, what's that? Hey, good power, good reach too, good reach. Wide 18, what's that? Good bend, good bend, yeah, yeah. Hit it off of this stance, and maybe you can get more length while still hitting it off that same foot, you know what I mean? I mean, just give, give it a shot, you know, see what's, yeah. This is a battle of wits here, Notre Dame and Northwestern. This is IQ, IQ battle right here. Get off was far better on the second rep. Better result, right? Hey, good period, fellas. That shit was fun as hell, man. Hey, great period, man. Good energy today, man. Keep it up, man. Hydrate, right, coach. Oh, I'm good, man. I don't do. I ain't doing today, man. Y'all are the ones working. I'm just riding a pencil, man. What the? No, the pre-practice, you were working down there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Some of you felt personal, man. That like, God damn. Huh? You might have been a Yeah, I'm the I'm the I'm the feds. I'm the feds, man. So y'all y'all go ahead and talk crazy, man. Y'all go ahead and talk crazy. I gotta get greased up for you guys, man. Yeah, things. This makes everyone a little, little anxious, right? Yeah, here's the police. I think I feel. I gotta wear this right there. I've never lost in Northwest. I am yeah, yeah, COVID cool. year. I'm lying. Yeah, I'm about to say. Hey, everybody lost to them COVID year. Hey, yeah, we were turned up. I don't know how to. It's developed a cure. <laughs> Let's go get on the foam rolls and bands. Let's get our recovery. Lights, camera, action. We play Tuesdays. We play Tuesdays. We play Tuesdays. You ain't never played on a Tuesday. That should be a selling point in your interviews with guys. I on Thursday though. You never played on a Wednesday. Had to go to class Thursday. I wouldn't have went to class. Hey now, hey guys, remember? I'm mic'd up now. Yeah, I'm mic'd up. He's still at, uh, man. You just it's still on? You're incriminating yourself, man. Where I don't know. Where's he at? Yeah. Oh, look, Did you just hear what he said? Hey, who was the guy you guys brought in that was running on everybody? Um, Emmanuel. Burton, man. Yeah. He a freshman. Six four quarterback. Dude, I was watching those Maxion games. That dude was torching dudes. Everybody, you you watch the news, you need like to cross eye your interviews because the camera be so close. Tell me about it. I was on Fox Live, bro. My mom watching the news. She's like, what are you doing? Look at the I mean, I can look at the camera. I got to look at the guy talking to me. The thing for me was hearing how I sounded. I was like, I didn't know I sounded like that. You know, like, sound all nasally. And I'm like, what? You're not going to make me look like an a are you? You better not. Still to come, the Commanders were the first team to earn a win against the Eagles this season. We share what it will take for each team to earn a victory in Sunday's big game. Game day details are delivered by Paisano's. Order online at paisanospizza.com. Super Bowl 57 is set to kick off here at University of Phoenix Stadium. You can watch the game on Fox with kickoff scheduled for 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Interesting note that both the Chiefs and the Eagles have both already won games here at the University of Phoenix Stadium this season. Time for our keys to winning presented by the Maryland Lottery. Play fast, win fast with fast play games from the Maryland Lottery. Here you go. It is the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles, the last two teams standing. London Fletcher. What are going to be the key to a victory here in this game? You know, when I look at the Kansas City Chiefs, what they must do, they must protect Patrick Mahomes. If that offensive line can give him enough time to exploit some matchups that they'll have in the secondary or, or at the receiver position against his Eagles secondary, those are things that they can do to exploit and win this ball game. And what about for Jalen Hurts? What would he need to do? You know, Jalen Hurts, not try to put too much on his plate, not try to be more than what he is, not try to match Patrick Mahomes throw for throw. 
That's not who he is. The Philadelphia Eagles, they love to run the football. So the running game can establish him, you know, his ability to take shots down the field, but also him with the zone reads, keeping the football. So don't try to all of a sudden become Patrick Mahomes. Just play your, your type of football and be the player that you are, Jalen. When you get to this level, is it more offense or defense that tends to kind of weigh out? You know what? It's, it's, it's more situational football. Are you good in the red zone? third down third down defense and offense things like that maybe creating a turnover so it's not necessarily one phase whether it's the offense defense special teams all those will play a part but it's more about situational football can you get a stop in the red zone are you executing on third downs are you making you know that fourth down stop things like that are the keys to winning the ball game and a lot like of this. that comes down to the coaching as well yes. what position are you putting your players in that is your keys to winning between the chiefs and the eagles Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Command Center Super Bowl coverage is presented by Safeway, the official supermarket of the Washington Commanders.